According to your profile, Lisa, you began your illustration career in 1993, working in fantasy gaming industry for companies such as Wizards of the Coast, producing over 110 paintings for world renowned for the world renowned card game. You've also created numerous paintings for popular role playing game, the prop, popular role playing game Dungeons and Dragons, World of Warcraft TCG, and have also done work for Tops on the Mars Attacks and Star Wars trading card sets. Yep. Uh, your list of uh, accomplishments are, are uh, extremely long, but the most important thing I think that you've ever done in your entire life is moving to Wisconsin. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, um, I which feel, I did, which I did when I was two years old. So <laughs> right, so it's all been downhill from there. You've been grasping at trying to uh, get that feeling of accomplishment back again, and it's, yeah. it drives you every day. I imagine. <laughs> So, so we met at uh, GP Minneapolis, in which I weaseled my way into a uh, an artist area, and um, you came in late and uh, had the uh, honor slash uh, not uh, opposite of honor of having the open seat next to me, and uh, so <laughs> then I you were subject to my constant questioning, but. Uh, I appreciate you being so candid that night and then also coming on uh, here to chat a little bit about um, the game as it, as it were. No problem, man. Happy to be here. Yeah. So also a fellow um, veggie, veggie, uh, veg, vegetarian guy, I think, right? Oh yeah. 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 You're a vegetarian? Uh, well, not by, you know, not by choice, <laughs> but uh, I eat meat rarely. My wife is a vegetarian, and has been for uh, forever. So. so, so, so you feel my pain being a vegetarian in Wisconsin, then? I... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's only cheese. While people here consider it a food group, yeah, um, going out to dinner isn't always that fun and right. and stuff. So I do I feel the pain and. <laughs> I imagine, you know, as someone who will indulge in uh, a brat or a hot dog or a steak while at uh, when people are grilling out, um, I imagine getting those pieces of uh, when I grill, you know, I always have a section, you know, on the grill for asparagus and whatever the stuff right. my food eats. Uh, yeah. She she gets on the grill and and we coexist. It's a uh, it's fine. <laughs> But it does lead to some stress. Yes. Um, so can, I want to start off. First of all, you've been designing magic or draw, doing painting for uh, magic for a very long time. How yes. have you been doing the GP series, the, the kind of the booths and the uh, guest well, appearance I, stuff? I was, I was kind of doing events right from the beginning for the most part um, uh, back when – Back when Wizards was uh, really handling all of the events, they were they were running all of the GPS and the and the Pro Tours and everything at that time, um, and 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 then at some point that switched over, um, and Wizards just you know they just handle the worlds in the Pro Tour now as far as I know, and then everything down is handled by you know independent you know tournament organizers. Um, but I was doing events right from the beginning. Um, but then there was a, there was a period there, maybe a decade or more. And then, and, you know, maybe a decade where I just, I took time off from doing events and, and all of that. So, sure. Yeah. Well, I imagine you do have a, a life outside of, you know, attending events and traveling all the time. And yeah, it's just, you know, work, uh, just kind of really picked up and just far too busy and, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, once things slowed down again and once I kind of wanted to reconnect with with fans and reconnect with players again and stuff like that, I kind of hit the circuit again doing some some GPs. And I did last year, uh, in 2015, I did quite a number of GPs or, or different events. I was probably at you know, 16, 17 different events. Not all magic, but mostly magic. Um, and this year I've slowed it down a little bit, maybe six six events, seven events. Yeah, that seems like uh, as someone who travels for work myself, um, I don't know. Do you have kids at home, or I have three kids? Yes, yeah. two of them are still at home. The other one is uh, in college. So 
Okay. Yeah, so I imagine traveling. I have four cats, so when I travel, it's always tough. So I can't imagine what actual human children, uh, they might not tolerate all that. <laughs> well, traveling. that's that's why, I mean, it's easier now because they're they're all pretty much grown up. They're all teenagers. Um, so, um, but that's why that, that's all another reason for that gap and in, in doing events and stuff like that is because that's the time at which they were younger and uh, I was spending all my time with them, you know, so. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, let me ask, so coming from a completely non-artist standpoint or mm -hmm. uh, point of view, I'm trying to be careful to not ask like stupid interview questions like, where do you get your inspiration from? And I won't <laughs> ask you anything like that. <laughs> or uh, what's your favorite one you ever drawn? Or you know, I at least know better than to ask that stuff. But I might still ask you something. But I, what I'm curious about is kind of like the the operational side of uh, being a working artist, specifically for for magic. So sure. when uh, and I think that this would be interesting to people who have the gift of of um, art in their life. When, when a car, when when uh, wizards needs art, yep. What happens next? Um, they it's it really hasn't changed uh, in all in all these years um, of doing it. It's pretty much the same process. Uh, uh, I mean, they've got a stable of artists uh, that they can choose from, and actually, they've got a lot more artists that they can choose from now than they ever had before, um, because they're they're choosing from artists. Uh, globally now um, so and I think they always were but like it's just it's really ramped up now you know they have a lot of artists that they can choose from um, and that's why you see so many new artists in the game um, so um, but the process is is basically I mean they the, the art director will contact you just like uh, they do with any other um, company and uh, ask if you want to be involved in in a particular set or, or upcoming project um, and then you know, you kind of say yes, and you're on their radar, and then uh, they'll send you an assignment uh, or two or three. So it's it all depends. And, uh, and oh god, uh, and then they 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 will just um, uh, they'll assign you a, a particular card. You know, and there's a lot that goes with it. You know, you've got style guides, you've got brand uh, stuff that you've got to adhere to. There's a look for magic. You know that they've got to maintain. There's there's lots of different things that they have to maintain, and uh, uh, they kind of give you all this information and, and so that you can stay on point uh, with the rest of the artists and um, and then you you know you work you work on the stuff so it is a bit different than maybe what some people would consider <clears throat> like uh, the business person in me understands that and someone who does employ artists from time to time mm -hmm. I I imagined um, there would be a decent set of not rules, but like, you know, um, general, general guidelines. Do they, so when you, when you get an assignment and you look, does the actual st stats of a card, do you know these things? Do they help? You don't know. Okay. No, no, they, they, I mean, you know, the artists, they keep the artists in the dark just as much as anybody else. I mean, they, They've got certain things they've got to protect before um, these things are released to the public, you know. Interesting. Um, so there's, yeah, there's definitely some stuff that, that you know, that, that they're not, not sharing with the artists either, you know. But do you know in general, let's say, I mean, how do you know something's big or small? Do they, t they help you? What they get, you get an art, you'll get an art description. I mean, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the R and D team has gotten together with the art directors and everybody involved, and 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 they've decided what this what this art is essentially going to be. Um, okay. And uh, uh, you'll you'll get an art description that says you know it's you know this particular creature and it's got to be this big and it's in this setting you know kind of thing, and it's. There's an awful lot that's already figured out before it gets to you, um, for good reason, right? Sure. And uh, but then you know, as the artist, as the illustrator, you bring your own particular flair to it, you know, your own particular style, and and of course, well, with every good relationship with an art director, there's there's occasionally some back and forth where you might have an idea that pushes the art 
a little bit further, the concept a little bit further, and they'll go, you know, hey, we didn't thought of, we hadn't thought of that, so, or that's a great idea, let's do that, or they'll shoot it down and say, no, no, we need it like this. We can't tell you why, but we need it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Interesting. I, I figure, yeah. um, is there, and this is just me being naive, but was there a point? It's easy for for me who sees the world in Excel spreadsheets to kind of think of an artist as this like person who likes to run shirtless through the fields and draw. <laughs> so, so like making the transition, I imagine is is this is an assumption. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the working artist at some point you probably had to make a decision and you have to uh, embrace the, the business side of art. And, oh, and these yeah. are just something, if you want to get paid, if you want to make a living drawing, this is the world that it, yeah. it is, right? Unless oh. you're someone who can sell a painting for a million dollars or. Right. Well, I think you have to, you have to make the distinction between, uh, between somebody who's a, a fine artist and kind of, you know, like, you know, blazing their own trail and, and doing their own thing and people buying their work based on that work. Uh, and, and, and an illustrator who in my mind and probably in the mind of, of all illustrators, illustrators is, you know, we're business people. Yeah. So uh, you're in the business of providing an image to a client and that client oftentimes has a particular image they want, they have in mind and, and they, they have paired up their project with your style of art and they've said Jeff's style of art is perfect for this project you know what I mean yeah but yeah that, does, that doesn't necessarily mean that I get to do whatever the heck I want you know it just mean it means that they want my style of illustration and and that's what it's all about it's about pleasing that art director pleasing that client and and that's whatever it takes and that means changing the artwork yeah, occasionally yeah. and that's something that a fine artist likely wouldn't do uh, a fine artist creates a painting and says this is it. I poured myself into it, and uh, you know, there's, there's no. I'm not changing it, uh, no matter what anybody says. And they have that right. They can do that because they're not answering to anybody. They're not doing it for a business, for a product. So, uh, yeah. yeah. One thing I've noticed um, is the uh, maturation, or at least in. Uh, somebody who's not living it every day, I'm noticing more and more um, artists in the magic space are are taking the right approach. Like this is uh, exposure, and mm -hmm. I can make a living building a fan base, and yeah. and then monetizing that fan base with providing them with whatever they want, whether it's um, commissions or pick or uh, signatures or prints or um, mm -hmm. it seems like. Um, a lot of artists are kind of putting their own websites out there now. I'm, I'm, I'm sure many, like for example, your site, um, it's jeffmiracola.com, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And that it seems pretty deep and has been around a long time. But then some other artists, you know, I look at when I was when I was trying to interview people, I'm like, oh man, they don't even have a website. So it's hard to imagine <laughs> like being able to really capitalize if you if you don't put on your businessman hat every once in a while. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's probably the number one thing. If you're going to go into the business of illustration, you realize it's a business, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to, there are certain things that you just have to have. You have to have websites, you have to have business cards, you have to, you have to communicate a certain way and things like this. So it's, you know, it is a business first and foremost, right? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, it makes, yeah, it makes a, a lot of sense, but I think, um, It'll be interesting to hear because I know there are a lot of people that play this game that are artistically inclined. And I, I think I mentioned this to you, but I had had maybe two or th maybe three drinks that evening. But I've always viewed. <laughs> Probably people... a little more. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, <laughs> um, it's the size of the glass, really. I mean, it's. Uh, <laughs> but um, art to me is a skill that can be refined, but still a gift in ability, in my opinion. And I use the analogy, I think when we were, t maybe when we were talking, but you know, I could shoot free throws all day and I'll never be as good as Michael Jordan. And right. um, what struck me when I was watching some of your instructional uh, videos this morning, trying to get uh, prepared for this interview, 
uh, just how technical it is. When, when I was, I watched your latest uh, tutorial where um, you're drawing a, a well, it's the last painting uh, that you did of kind of the creature with uh, the light coming out of its mouth and yeah, yeah. like a, a trunk like head or something. Sure, some exactly. creepy thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And as much as I was watching that, I, I realized that I I didn't understand at, like every other word out of your mouth. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, there's a lot to it for for people who are watching this or listening. Like, um, yeah. it's more than just you know the concept of you put how many glazes on that thing. I'm like, well, he's painting over it. What is he doing? <laughs> and all these effects. Um, and that kind of leads to uh, what people might not know about you is you're also a fellow YouTuber. Um, yep. You have 27,000 and change subscribers, which is no small uh, achievement. Yeah. Um, and I, I, the production quality of your videos are, are great. And what, nice. what kind of brought you into that instructional kind of, you know, the, the YouTube world? Oh man, um, it was kind of by mistake. Well, it wasn't by mistake. It was just, um, uh, just bored one day, um, <laughs> and decided to kind of film uh, my process. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did. I did a couple of little just short videos where I, it was the kind of typical, like you know, handheld camera, just showing me working on a little something, um, and. After I did those, I was like, oh, that's cool, you know, and it, it got a few views and whatnot. I decided that uh, I should put together a little bit better video because I've, I've got I've got video production skills. I've got editing. I've got a history with, with you know, knowing how to edit videos and, and, you know, work on video productions and whatnot. So I, I decided, you know, let's just do something a little bit better um, just for fun. So you had like a sliver of free time and you're like, well, let's just get rid of that. Right? Yeah. 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 And I understand how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I, I kind of filmed myself and there was a, there was a particular painting that I, that I wanted to work on. Uh, I had a little bit of personal time uh, to work on a personal painting. And so I was like, I, I want to do this. And I'll just go ahead and film the process at the same time. And my wife um, helped me film that at the time. I saw that you had a live model basically, right? For, I, I noticed in the, uh, you had, is that her standing there? You have her kind of cut into the channel intro where you're painting. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. That's very cool. Yeah. She will, she'll occasionally model for me. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I put together that video and, and kind of threw it up on, on YouTube and all of a sudden it blew up, you know? Yeah. And Isn't that it, fun? I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. And, and, I, I, you know, the response that I was getting was, I mean, cause there's, there's really no shortage of artists that are putting videos up on YouTube. I mean, lots of people do this. They, they film themselves working on their paintings. They film themselves working on stuff, but oftentimes what it is, is it's a lot of time-lapse stuff. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, uh, or, or the artist isn't really explaining what they're doing. Um, there aren't nice close up shots so that people can see what they're really doing. Um, and so I think that was the response I was getting was that, hey, man, it's it's so cool. You know, that you're doing this stuff real time and you're explaining to us like what you're doing. Um, and uh, I think that really kind of resonated with people. And uh, then that, that kind of spurred me to do more. And I just kind of kept doing more and more and more and more. And now it's just now it's just grown uh, yeah, to, yeah. Like, to like you said, to about 27,000, well, over 27,000 subscribers. And and that that kind of led me into doing the DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, thing because people were the, my YouTube videos are all like you know they range from seven minutes to uh, I think maybe the longest one might be twenty five minutes half an hour maybe more um, uh, but people are so more 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 Jeff more 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 you know everybody asks for yeah. more right you know that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to do it but the but the the level of production in my videos means I can't just like film it and throw it up there it's like there's a lot of time spent on production editing music putting music to it and doing voiceover and stuff like that and so it takes me time in between each video and then I decided because people were asking for more I'm like well I'll do some like crazy long DVD yeah. and 
and I put it on like four discs and it's like six and a half hours worth of content. And it's, yeah, that took me like six months to make. Yeah. And by the way, I should let everyone know who's watching. I'm going to have links to Jeff's YouTube channel below. If, if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. And then <clears throat> I, <laughs> I was looking at your DVD on Amazon. I think you have 27 five, all five star reviews. I mean, I, know. I was like, your family can't be that big. I mean, so oh. like, <laughs> a few of those people probably bought it and oh, yeah. uh, really well, enjoyed it. There's no, there's no family members on there. <laughs> <laughs> they all got their free copies. <laughs> oh yeah, I suppose. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, that's um really cool. And then so yeah, people can actually check that out if you go to the the website. Jeff's website or on his YouTube channel or it's on Amazon. It's also available for digital download. Yeah. Uh, so any way you want to consume, um, what I would suggest people do is check out his YouTube channel and then just see, because I was really uh, humbled by, of course, you know, of course you can draw, of course you can do better YouTube videos than I can do, you know, whatever. But I mean, um, the, the production quality is great. I, I thought even as somebody who isn't an artist, it was pretty interesting. I watched a couple of them uh, this morning, and I would imagine that what you get on the DVD is just that multiplied. Um, oh yeah, it's way better. It's because I yeah, I, like I said, I took six months and I I really planned it out and really really did a good job with it. And uh, yeah, it's no, it's the best video I've ever made um, for by far. So I'm it's, actually. It's, is it more of an instructional? Why don't you um, tell me a little bit about what it is too? It's it's um it's not a it's not a um it's not a like, paint by numbers thing, right? It's not it's a like, paint by numbers thing. It's no, it's not a create your own version of my painting DVD. It's a it's it's a look at my process, just like some of my other YouTube videos, but it's it's way more detailed. I mean, it's there's there's uh, practically no questions you'd have after looking at this about, okay, I don't understand, you know, what, what, you know, it's, it's really just from beginning to end of my entire yeah, process yeah. from the thumbnailing concept stage all the way to the final sealing, the final painting, you know? So, um, uh, and a lot of other wisdom and, and technical, uh, stuff in between and lots of like tips about materials and, uh, you know, you name it, I kind of cover everything. It's all about acrylic painting too, by the way. Okay. So, yeah, let's make that distinction. That that DVD is all about acrylic painting. All I know about acrylic painting is that there's a that Bob Ross uses a lot of titanium white. White, and, yeah, it's a <laughs> cad red and cad blue. And... But Bob Ross was working in oils. Oh yeah, okay. Well, so not even not I know nothing then apparently. See? <laughs> Bob Ross was not painting with acrylics. He was painting in oils, and that's how he got all those wonderfully smooth, beautiful blends. And oh, okay, and that's how he could he could pull down those reflections of trees. You know. Yeah, yeah. That was always that's always interesting. That knife on the canvas, the ASMR. We were talking about that. Yes. Um, a non uh, and 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 I'll uh, I know you're a busy man. I, I do want to. I did have a question about. I don't know if this is something that you wanted to do more of at some point or not, but uh, w tell me a little bit about the book, the Welcome to Monster Isle. I, I oh. noticed that there's quite a bit of. Um, obviously, I'm not in the target audience for that book. Sure. But I read some of the reviews. Yep. That's Scott Fisher wrote. If I were a zombie, Jeff Miracola's brain would be on top of my uh, list of things to eat, and the book would be dessert. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a pretty strong review. And I looked at somebody had done some 3D um, animation of the art illustration I saw on YouTube, and yeah. I don't know if that was uh, approved or not, but I, I saw yeah, it no. out there somewhere. <laughs> no, it, it was because well, the, so uh, at some point. Um, I had been doing you know, a lot of work for fantasy uh, fantasy art companies, Wizards of the Coast, D&D, &D, whatever you name it. And, you know, the fantasy art industry is still very small. And, um, you know, as artists, you always want to kind of, and especially as a business person, you want to branch out. You need to constantly think about expanding your your client base and, and, and building on, on finding new clients and things like that. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket and necessarily do everything for one client because if that client disappears then your your business kind of folds and so one of the things that I did was I actively 
uh, searched out new opportunities. And one of those opportunities was working in the children's book industry. It seems like a, a kind of a natural progression for a lot of fantasy artists to kind of move over into the children's book realm. Um, uh, and uh, at the time that I did that, uh, one of the first book projects I did was the one you mentioned. It's a picture book called Welcome to Monster Isle. I, I also, at the same time I moved over, I didn't want to do my same style of art. So that's why you notice with, with Welcome to Monster Isle, it's all digital art. Yeah. And yeah. it's a lot more childlike. I mean, it's, if you put that next to my fantasy art, you probably never know it was the same artist because they're very two very different styles and that's what stuck out to me about it i, I was like um I, I was reading through your bio and then i looked at the the couple of stills from the book and i was like oh yeah it was hard to imagine that it was the yeah. same person yeah because i think as artists you know you there there are those artists out there that have the same look their entire lives um and that that can be a good thing that that can be a good because you know art directors and clients contact them they know exactly what they're going to get um but then there are those other artists like myself who, who, I don't know if I have like ADD or something or like <laughs> with art, but I, you know, over time I'll, I'll get bored with things and I, I want to try something new and I've got other images in my head or other things in my head and, and sometimes those other images are in a different style um, than what I'm currently working. And so I like to explore and try, try some new things. And that was one of those things I was like, you know, let's, let's explore this. And also... It was it was it was kind of a conscious decision for me to at this open up that that new clients you know to find new clients that I that I couldn't find with my fantasy art style um, by by changing my style in the children's book realm it it opened up I all of a sudden I started getting work with Scholastic and and other children's book companies and started working with Target you know places that I wouldn't have been able to work with with my current fantasy art style. So, um, so it did exactly what I hoped it would. It opened up a lot more clients to me and, and, and it was fun and, and I'm, you know, I'm still doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's, that seemed pretty interesting to me. It seemed like, um, like you said, it seemed like a deliberate decision. Yeah. Uh, and that that's the kind of stuff that I imagine as an entrepreneur, well, I, I work from home too and I, I, I right. do something very different, but not, but we run our businesses the same way. I mean, you right. have to be um, trying new things because it makes everything else better too. I'm sure there are things from that uh, the book that you can bring into your fantasy art, and then things yep. from your fantasy art that you brought into that. So exactly, everybody yeah. wins, right? So right. Um, one thing. Okay, so with over something like a hundred magic cards designed books mm -hmm. d instructional dvds <laughs> two things what's what's next for you and <laughs> and where can people catch you next when's the next gp um obviously your youtube channel and the and your website are great ways to keep in contact with you yeah. but um what, what what what's next on your what's the next uh salad you want to eat in the in the in the, <laughs> in, the, in, the in the uh game of um you know, art and, and then also where can people catch you? So, uh, so the next big project is an oil painting DVD. So because I did the acrylic one, I, I have an awful lot of people that are saying, you know, that either bought that one or, or, you know, are saying, okay, great. Now I want to learn about oils, you know? So, um, that's, that's going to be fun. I'll be able to put on my Bob Ross hat for that one. Or my, yeah. Uh, yeah. My Bob Ross Afro, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's the next big project, and I mean the, the acrylic one took me like six months to do. I'm hoping the oil painting one doesn't take as long because I've learned a lot from doing that one, and should make it more efficient moving forward. Um, but uh, that's the next big project on the horizon. Well, fortunately, uh, we have nine months of winter here in Wisconsin, so that's right. You have so, plenty of time to exactly to edit. cooped yeah. up, so might as well just paint and film right. it. Uh, and then, yeah, the next GP that I'm doing is uh, actually this coming weekend, GP Columbus. So okay. uh, that's put on by uh, professional event services, and uh, they always run great events. So that's happening June 10th uh, through the 12th. Okay. Uh, so I'm so oh, excited Columbus, about that. Yeah, that's drivable, right? From yeah, Milwaukee? I'm driving out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm driving out there because at the same time, I'm going to stop and see some fellow uh, magic artists. 
um, and visit with them as well. One of them is going to be at the event, Steve Prescott, so I'll get to see Steve. Oh, yeah. um, but then there are other magic artists that live in Ohio and other artists that I'm going to kind of like s swing by and see yeah. them to hang out. Yeah, that sounds fun. This video will actually go up today, so people will have time to come uh, check you out at your booth yep. um, and get whatever they want signed. That is a, a big deal at GP's. Also, buy your prints. Yep. Buy all of the Jeff items, all of the things, <laughs> the DVDs, help support. I mean, I think it's important, that, that I, as I told you in Minneapolis, too, I want artists to be able to make a living, and yeah. it takes more than just painting um, magic cards to do it. I mean, maybe that pays the bills ba barely, but you have to be able to do these other things to... Well, but magic is great for that. I mean, I, I might have I might have told you that too when we were talking that did, night. Yeah. That that magic is, you know, that one product that or that one uh, brand that allows people like me to have a career that spans twenty years. You know that, that it's got the fan base, and there aren't many other there aren't many other games out there that have that kind of following and that kind of uh, you know audience, and so. Yeah, I think it's awesome that I can travel to that. Many of many of us artists can travel to GPs or, or smaller events, you know, and things like this, and and actually make a living uh, doing this stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is that is cool, and I, I'm a, a benefit of a benefactor of the community as well. I mean, uh, yep. if not for the community, nobody would watch this video, and you know, I wouldn't be able to work from home in front of a pile of fat packs and right. And, have my dog over there but um <laughs> I, I really appreciate you taking the time i know you're really busy um, no worries. everybody uh, the links will be in the description below shoot on over to jeff's channel at least tell him thanks for uh for schooling me a little bit in the in the is the ways of the master and um i yeah, i can't I believe you didn't ask me about any of my magic card all your people all your fans are going to be like Dude, why didn't you ask him about Magic Card or this and that? Well, you didn't want to ask the typical questions. Yeah, I went, I went out of the, I went out of my way to, not because, <laughs> I feel like people who know who you are will already know. Uh, when I was at the GP, um, and of course I'll be dead wrong, and people are like, dude, <laughs> and you know, but I feel like. Um, a hundred magic cards. I mean, like mana barbs, for example, is what, uh, art that is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Um, but there are a number of slivers you've done, and I know there are sliver fanatics. I'm sure there are sliver haters and there's sliver lovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that um, they represent a good chunk of people that come over to your booth and with a hundred different cards i mean i imagine the diversity of cards that you end up signing or people bring to you are uh i mean it's such a huge pool i mean oh, yeah. um and well, the, yeah i've been i've been doing art for it since 95 you know and i mean i kind of got in with the mirage block uh, block so um yeah it's you know there i get lots of you know older players they you know the, the nostalgia of the game they've got their you know their first cards that they had and an awful lot of people like, Oh, raging goblin. That was like the first card ever, you know, that yeah, I love. Yeah. So, there they come over and, you know, I, I love that stuff. I think it's awesome. I mean, it, it kind of, it started, it weirded me out when I, I took that break for many years and then I kind of came back to the game and or back to the GP circuit and stuff like that. And people would come up to me and it'd be just like this huge, like, hulking guy that's like six feet tall and he'd like pop down these cards and he'd go man this is so awesome i remember getting these in third grade and, I, <laughs> <laughs> and i'd go oh my god i'm old <laughs> yeah yeah thanks <laughs> thanks yeah. a lot yeah <laughs> but, but uh it, it weirded me out at first but uh i kind of really came to embrace that and i think it's just so awesome that for one there are so many players that are still in the game. They're like still doing it since they were in third grade, you know, yeah. like that's phenomenal. I Which, mean, it's, yeah. One of the things I tell people about magic, that's so strange. It's kind of like, um, smoking in a way that like <laughs> I've had like a thousand last cigarettes and I've, and I've quit magic many times, but yeah. you, you always come back because it, they, they, there's yeah. so many different, 
aspects to it. Like there is a, a, a there is a percentage of players that are not zero that just love the art and that's it. Right. Yep. And there are players like me who pro- could probably play on blank cards yep. and then just have not that yeah, I, it, run, it runs the gamut, right? I mean, yeah. I've got I got lots of people that come up to me and say that they got into the game because of the art. Yeah. Um, then, like you said, there are just as many people that that it's kind of yeah, it doesn't matter. It's like meh, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. They, they're they're. I mean, they may they may have an emotional connection to that art now because the card is so awesome because you know uh, for whatever reason you know it's it's in their deck and their cube whatever and so they that's why but. Uh, for them, the art may be secondary, but I, but I love that kind of diversity of uh, of players and the fact that the game is ever changing and evolving but for better or worse, right? I mean, yeah. uh, for better or worse, the game is evolved, always evolving, and 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 new players are coming in all the time, and uh, that's what makes it exciting. So, yeah. yeah, there's always something. There's something for everyone. That's I mean, for for it, there's something to love about the game for almost everybody. Yeah, um, and there's like you said, there's the hard, hardest core grinders down to people that only play EDH and they play once a month, but they've been playing for 20 years and they have the same deck that, yeah. you know, in the same sleeves. And <laughs> that's cool. You know, that's kind of how I am. I started in 1993 and revised when I was um, much younger than I am now. Yeah. And, um, you know, I remember stuff like that. I can close my eyes and remember the art on Unholy Strength and all the controversy around the pen- pentagram or whatever that was on there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when I see, like, Eternal Masters stirs up a lot of feelings for me because they reprint a lot of cards and they couldn't get the rights on a lot of them. So I'm like, ugh. Like, <laughs> the polar bear is supposed to be throwing an orb on Winter Orb, not, you know. <laughs> Where's the polar bear? <laughs> like... But I mean, so I guess I can't say the art is irrelevant, but to right. me, I mean, it has meaning to me. Um, sure. But yeah, all the old art always um, kind of holds a place in my heart. Yeah. Um, and then now I I enjoy the game for different reasons, but right. I still play. I've probably quit three times, maybe four, come back every time. Yeah. This last time, I'm sure I'll need a break again. <laughs> and then, you know, and I'll come back and then I'll, it'll still be here, which is uh, a really great feeling. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So. Yeah, well, thanks so much for everything. I, I, I wait all the comments from my subscribers telling me that I didn't ask you about magic cards. Thanks for reminding them. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, uh, I try to be, yeah, I'm overly cognizant of asking cheesy questions, but I guess people ask those kinds of questions because that's what people want to know sometimes. But Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, hopefully people can come out and see you at the GP or at least on your YouTube channel. Thanks so much for all the time, man. I hope you oh, have a... Um, yeah, they, don't catch me at this, they don't catch me at this GP. I'll be at... I'll be at GP Indianapolis later this year. I'll be at GP Milwaukee. You know, I'll be at Gen Con too. I know oh, a lot yeah. of yeah. I'll be at GP. Yeah. I'll be at GP Indianapolis as well. Oh, there um, you go. Well, GP so. Milwaukee. I mean, people can just. What's your address again? You, you can just stay by you, right? I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Thanks, thanks, Jeff, for everything. Uh, yeah, it was man. great thanks to meet you, me. and I'd love to have you on again uh, later in the year when you get to your new project. We can maybe talk about that and. And right. uh, we'll see you down in Indianapolis, probably. Wonderful. And, you know, thanks for having me on. And, and thanks to all your subscribers for watching this. I appreciate it very much. All right. Thanks, Jeff. What's up? And thanks for watching this video. I produce all different kinds of content. So if you haven't yet, click on my face to subscribe. If you want to watch more videos, I've got some sweet playlists, including this one, where I open up every fat pack ever created. I've also got this one over here where I open just about anything vintage and old and expensive for your enjoyment. And all this is made possible by the awesome backers at our Patreon, which is linked in the description of every video. Hop on over there, check it out, see if it's something you might want to consider. If not, sit back, enjoy, and I'll still love you.